Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Gen 2, your source for all things gaming and tech related. I'm Colton Emsweiler. And I'm Wesley Ellington. Let's get right into this week's up and coming releases. You can see these games and many more released throughout the month on your favorite platforms. We've got another small list of releases for you this week, but there is one title that people have been waiting to get their hands on since seeing it since last year's E3. Sekiro Shadows died twice for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 on March 22nd. This game from From Software, also known as the creators of Bloodborne and the Dark Souls series, as you play as one armed warrior who was tasked with recovering the young lord he was supposed to protect. You must make your way through 1500s Japan using multiple different prosthetic weapons as well as your stealthy ninja skills. Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, everybody, for the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch on March 20th. The classic Final Fantasy Fables, Chocobo's Dungeon, is back with an enhanced gameplay system to be enjoyed by both first-timers and fans of the series. Explore the challenges of never-ending dungeons and befriend monsters with the new buddy system. SNK 40th Anniversary Collection for the PlayStation 4 on March 19th. This collection of arcade games is finally hitting the PlayStation 4 after already coming out for the Nintendo Switch. This collection includes many different classic arcade games, many of which were groundbreaking for the industry as a whole. These games and many more will be releasing throughout the month, so make sure to be on the lookout for them. And up next, check out Aaron's analysis with Aaron. With Aaron. Hello, and welcome to Aaron's analysis. This week we're going to be looking at Devil May Cry 5, the first new game in the main series in 11 years. During the trailers, I had a feeling that they would not be able to deliver on the hype that I was feeling for this game. And man, was I wrong. This is one of my favorite games that I've played, and it's hooked me the same way that the Souls games do. I believe it's the challenge that each series presents. I don't think it's unfair to say that Devil May Cry and Dark Souls are both challenging for different reasons. I love the Souls games, but the pace of combat in Devil May Cry is far past anything that you usually see in Souls, or even Bloodborne. I'd think I say that the Dark Souls games are more punishing when you make mistakes, while Devil May Cry is more demanding when you excel in its combat and mechanics. The highlight of this game for me are the characters for sure. Not only are there three characters that you play as, all of them are vastly different in terms of gameplay, weapons, and combat system. They made Nero into such a powerhouse compared to Devil May Cry 4. He is much closer in terms of depth to Dante with all of the abilities and techniques that they give him, and he's just a blast to play as. With his new Devil Breakers, he has an array of different tools for combat, such as a rocket-propelled fist that flies around and attacks enemies. Dante is the best he's ever been. His arsenal is one of the most varied I've seen, and the most stylish. The Cavalier and Cerberus Devil Arms alone are insane. His guns are a bit on the weak side in my opinion, but the rest of his arsenal makes up for it. I love his new weapons and the new abilities that they give him while retaining his old style dancing gameplay. And V, while a bit odd, is enjoyable to play as. I don't think he's up there with the other two, but he is a nice change of pace. He sure gets some get getting used to, but once you grasp how he f plays, fights become pretty easy. I appreciate them trying to do something different, even if this was possibly the weakest part of the game for me. They made the game more accessible by going easier on some of the timings needed for things such as the Exceed, the Max Act, or Table Hoppers, and simplifying some of the inputs greatly. On the other hand, they have ramped up the amount of enemies on screen and the behavior of each enemy, so the challenge is very much still there. There are so many options to juggle, traverse, and defend, it's insane. Each character is very deep, mechanically. The Void is something that was needed since a long time, and I feel like it helped me make my own combos even better. The only thing missing is maybe the possibility of sparring versus the bosses for some training. The story was fine, with a lot of it seeming to be fan service for longtime players of the series. I would have preferred a wider variety of environments, seeing as most of the game is in two or three locations. The graphics and animation are all top notch though. I don't remember the last time I played a game that felt like such a smooth experience. Over the time I've been playing video games, I've loved a lot of them, but every game always has that area or that boss that is just annoying, frustrating, and not fun, and every time you replay the game, you're reminded of why that spot sucked so much. Soulsborne games, Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising are all great action games, but they still suffer from that fact. I don't remember the last time I played an action game where I felt for even a second that I was not having an absolute blast. Every mission, every boss was just so much fun. The Bloody Palace can't come soon enough, and I'll be playing Devil May Cry 5 for a while to come. Also, the Dr. Foss Dante dance scene is just amazing. That scene shows why Devil May Cry is so unique and loved by its fans. I don't want to needlessly trash on the reboot of Devil May Cry, but the Dr. Foss dance scene shows a certain charm that that reboot lacked. It's scenes like this that remind me why I love video games so much. It's not afraid to be over the top and have a little bit of fun with itself. 
That's why Devil May Cry is Devil May Cry, and then there's probably nothing else like it. I really hope Capcom and the Devil May Cry 5 team keep the push of quality they've shown with titles like this. Thanks for watching Aaron's analysis. Next up, we've got Trevor with This Week In. Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of This Week In, that segment of Gen 2 where I talk about new releases, industry news, game updates, and more. This week I'm talking about Battlefield 5's Battle Royale mode Firestorm. A again. Yeah, yeah, I know last week I covered Reddit user Temporal's unofficial leaks on the game mode, but this week EA, DICE, and Criterion officially revealed the game mode in a new trailer. Now we actually have official details that we can break down and analyze for all you Battle Royale fans out there. Okay, first off, the map is supposedly 12 times the size of the African map Hamada, which if you play Battlefield 5 or watched others play, you'll know that Hamada is huge. And also my least favorite battlefield map to play if I'm being honest. Anyways, you start just like any other battle royale by airdropping onto the map. It's unconfirmed as of recording this video, but it appears as if the playable area will already be established when you jump into the map. Seeing as the player count as of now is only 64 players opposed to the traditional 100, it would make sense that the playable area is smaller. Also, this is a good opportunity for each match to be somewhat different. You might not be able to go to that same favorite location every time you jump in. So at the beginning of the trailer, we have our two squads landing on top of each other, needing to loot. Then we have this comedic exchange of gunfire. One squad pops a flare, which then sends an artillery barrage down on the other, which shows us that reinforcements can be called in. However, it is unclear whether or not it is a pickup item or you have to earn this some other way. Our squad then comes across a tractor that is obviously drivable and later bursts out of a barn with a towable pack gun connected as they blast away another squad. One of the squad members is seen running with a gas can, which would imply the leak about vehicles using fuel is confirmed. The barn is then seen crumbling down. It seems as if destruction, a staple of the Battlefield franchise, is set to remain on full display here for Battle Royale. Another vehicle we can confirm is the helicopter. Yes, this is a World War II themed game, but it seems as if the developers are trying to allow for some added fun here. It is a Battle Royale after all, and and in today's age, these games typically don't stick to authenticity. But all that aside, we also know that there is some form of amphibious transport vehicle as well as tanks. The trailer shows at one point a tank being airdropped in, but also shows another squad opening a restricted area of some sort to gain access to a heavier tank. As the squad opens this chamber, a siren sounds off alerting nearby enemies of what is happening. One of the things I found most impressive from the trailer was the firestorm itself. The sheer destruction of everything in its path as it closes in on the remaining players just looks amazing. One thing that kind of stood out was how it seems that players can be engulfed in the ring of fire and still come through provided they had enough health initially. I wasn't for sure how this would work at first, seeing as fire in the last couple of Battlefield games has been super OP. Overall, I gotta say that after seeing this trailer, I'm definitely more interested in the game mode than I was previously. However, I'm not gonna hold my breath because I do understand this is EA we're talking about and I of course still have my doubts about the overall quality of the mode upon release. But anyway, that does it for this week in. My name has been Trevor. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time here on KNWT Channel 8. Welcome to another edition of Game Breakers. I'm your host, Wesley Ellington, and this week we're going to be playing UFC 3 Career Mode. I already have a ton of characters in the game, but I'm going to show you guys a new one I created and the finished product for something. So, let's get into the gameplay. UFC 3 Career Mode is definitely my favorite game mode in the game. I spent countless hours creating and modifying characters, and the fun is honestly never ending. Creating a male or female character determines how many options you have when it comes to divisions. Which sucks, because they have more divisions than the actual UFC, but you do have the option to create your own unique fighting style regardless of self. The creation suite this year is pretty cool. It has the usual creation options like facial dimensions, hair, skin color, etc. But what is unique to this game is the ability to choose your personality, which is like the celebration you do after you win. You also get to choose the stands that you want from a library of all the UFC fighters in the game. Like most career modes, you start off at the bottom and you work your way up. You have a couple of fights outside of the UFC, and if the UFC president, Dana White, believes you're good enough to be in the UFC, you get the chance to compete within it. Before every fight, you have the chance to choose your opponent. I usually pick the opponent that has the best matchup for me stylistically. When training for a fight, I find the best way is to start off your camp by going into the learning browser and applying some cool new moves to your fight. Next, I usually spar to get my fitness to a level where I can train without injuring myself. But be careful, because the CPU can definitely knock you out. And for the most important part of your pre-fight preparation, training. Now training is where you can actually increase your fighter stats, whether that's your striking, your grappling, your stamina, or your health. 
but probably one of the coolest features of career mode is the rivalry system. As you can see in the bottom left of the main career mode menu, Random Marcos is my current rival. I have to fight three fights of my choosing before I have to face them. But depending on who your rival is determines how many fights you have to have before you face them. One cool part about the rivalry system is before every rivalry fight you get this cool cutscene or hype video that shows you shadow boxing and even talking trash to your opponent. The fight with your rival is usually the hardest fight. I actually remember this one you're currently watching was really difficult because of my opponent's style. I as a striker usually struggle with grapplers, but that's what makes the fight so much more fun. After each rivalry fight, you earn a new contract that gets you closer and closer to fighting for the belt. Once you actually get the chance to fight for the title, it feels like the final boss of career world. It feels like the culmination of the entire game. And even though you've had other rivals, this is usually by far the toughest. And depending on which difficulty you play on, this could be extremely challenging. Luckily, I've played this game enough, so it's not too hard for me. And this is where I usually lose interest in the game. After you win the title, it doesn't feel like there's any trajectory, any arc to the story. It loses all of its fun aspects. This fighter is one of my fighters that has won the title and never lost it. And at this point, it's almost boring because you just dominate everyone. And that's all for this video. Make sure to tune in next time. We'll be doing a preview of WrestleMania 35. Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Monkey Plays. This week I'll be reviewing Player Unknown Battlegrounds, or better known as PUBG. PUBG is a pay-to-play battle royale that can be found on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. And it is also free for Apple and Android mobile devices. Also, a little side note, this is my first PC battle royale review, so my skill level isn't too high and my aim isn't the best. So let's jump right on into it. At first glance, PUBG, PUBG. When I first heard of PUBG, I honestly never liked the look of the gameplay. It seemed super slow and the movement seemed like actually glitchy. I never played PUBG during its prime because I didn't have a PC and it wasn't released for console. So I watched popular Twitch streamers Shroud and Dr. Disrespect. Shroud enjoyed it because it was something new from CSGO and the doc was always raging about audio problems, G-Sync, V-Sync, Bullet Reg, and more. While I don't know if these problems are still in the game, I'll be sure to cover everything in this review. So let's start with what I liked. Just because there was only one thing I did like, and that one thing I liked was the training mode. Being new to PC and PUBG in general, the training mode within the game was very helpful with learning the new game. Just like H1Z1, I got to shoot every gun, at targets, and in people. In PUBG, there's attachments for weapons, and sometimes a gun can have multiple different number of attachments to use. So being able to learn what each attachment does to the characteristics of the gun while shooting was very helpful, which I thought was super cool. Now we get into what I didn't like. First being the very long wait times. There are four maps within PUBG, and only two that I saw could boot instantly into a game. The other maps require a three to four minute queue, which I didn't want to wait for because the game doesn't draw the appeal to interest to me. This could be because the game is rapidly dying and the population isn't what it is anymore. Now that Apex Legends is out, I assume more of the non-cartoon Fortnite haters migrated over from PUBG to try out the new popular game which definitely hurt their player base in the long run. Let's talk looting. This is going to be a difficult problem to explain because I feel like it's at a personal level. You guys remember how I mentioned in my past videos about my playstyle being fast, everything's fast, looting, dropping, running, killing, etc. In all the battle royale games I've played, I've easily been able to run past the item and pick it up. In PUBG, it's almost like there's these loot hitboxes where you almost have to be standing over the item exactly to pick it up. And having to run back to pick something up that you didn't was super annoying to me. I don't know if I just experienced this for myself or my playstyle just doesn't fit the game. Either way, I didn't like it. PUBG was horrible. It was terrible. I never enjoyed one second of this game, honestly. And truthfully, I went into this game with high hopes because I always wanted to play because of the streamers that I watched. This game has been out for close to two years and the same problems I watched Dr. Disrespect ran over in many streams, I experienced myself and that's pitiful. 
A big thank you to Trendon who actually bought the game and let me play on his account for the sake of this video. You're the real MVP. If you're watching this, please don't buy it. I promise it isn't worth it. I'm honestly just going to give this game a 1 banana out of 10 just because I did enjoy the training mode. Thank you guys for watching the video. This has been Cody with Monkey Plays. I'll catch y'all later. Now here's Dalton with Project Delta. Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new, super exciting episode of Project Delta. I'm Dalton Spies and with me this week I have... Cody Nance. And so uh, of course we've got the brand new Devil May Cry 5 with us. Uh, we're playing some this week and Cody's our resident uh, Devil May Cry 5 guy. And so I'm somebody who I've never really played anything. I don't know much of the story. So ex can you explain the story and just kind of what's going on to a noob like me? All right, so Devil May Cry is a demon hunting business. Uh, it's kind of like pest control, but more hardcore than that. Oh, just a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> so um, in the fourth game, Dante has been our main character for for three games, and then in the fourth game, we switched to the newbie, Nero. And uh, Dante saw something that he liked in this kid, so after he helped him out in the fourth game, uh, he handed the business over while he went and took care of some things in the underworld during two. Um, so a powerful demon has arisen, and Dante and Nero must once again join forces to take him down. Now that sounds like a fantastic time. Nothing like feels as good as just going out and hunting some demons on a Sunday morning, oh, yeah. you know, just like, just chilling, everybody's having a good time. And uh, speaking of good times, I want to know, uh, what do you think of the collector's edition that came out with this game? I'm not talking about the $180 version. I'm talking about the $8,600 collector's edition for a video game. And of course, with that collector's edition, you get a replica of Dante's leather jacket. And I gotta say, Cody, I'm surprised I haven't seen you rocking this thing just all over campus. How are you not the one who got your hands on it? Well, one, I don't have $8,000. <laughs> oh, you know, that there but it is right there. I did uh, treat myself to the deluxe edition, which gives you some new uh, interesting robot arms. Mm -hmm. And one of those is interesting because it's the uh, Mega Man. Buster. Oh. And yeah, you could just get to run around with Mega Man's cannon if you wanted to. That sounds like fun. I think I remember in um, uh, Dead Rising 3, I believe you could get a Mega Man cannon, which was just, you know, a great time. You're just killing zombies with, with your Mega Man Buster. So Capcom's all about that, uh, that Capcom, crossover. Capcom <laughs> loves them a good crossover. It's like not even a question. They just, Marvel versus Capcom, you know, right there, boom, crossover biggest crossover since the Avengers, of course. And, um, but I know uh, one of the main appeals of Devil May Cry is the combat. And so I wanna know, what do you think about the combat in this game? Oh, I absolutely love it. It's addicting. Um, the moves are just ridiculous and crazy as they should be. And you always feel like you're the most powerful guy in the room. And it's all, it's not necessarily about efficiency, it's about style. Of and course. Something interesting with this series is that instead of uh, multiple button prompts for different moves, you mm -hmm. only have triangle. And so the way they do that is they, um, they map triangle your moves to your timing of the pressing of triangle. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, one pause, two, two would be your um, basic combo. Yeah. And I really like it because then I don't have to memorize as many button prompts. And yeah, it's more it's more about the timing and less about just the just the mashing. Right. And so that's that makes it a lot more fun. And of course, you know, there's combats where you can just kind of turn your brain off and like not pay attention to it at all. But then you get something like uh, Devil May Cry where it's really like the most fun part of the game. And it's got um, you can see the little style meter at the top right, and it's ranking how well you're playing. Uh, you're kind of at a D right now, so you might want to pick it up. But yeah, uh, yeah that's just, just a little like fun thing that it kind of keeps you on your toes and makes you realize like, oh, maybe I need to need to pick it up a little bit. And so I want to know, are you someone who grew up with Devil May Cry or is it kind of an acquired taste for you? A little bit of both. Um, I grew up watching my brother play it, so I didn't really get much hands on on it with, when I was a kid because it came out in like 2001, so I wasn't of age to play it yet. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's an M-rated game, so you know, I, I don't know if you were 18 in 2001. <laughs> no, I, uh, I got my first hands on uh, when the HD collection for the PS4 came out mm -hmm. last year, 
and I just fell in love with it immediately, and it's now my favorite franchise that I want to learn everything about. Yeah, there's there's a, I've had a, kind of an experience like that where there's just like, a, I was a late bloomer on a game. Uh, the Witcher 3, I, I had never played any of the Witcher games before, but I played The Witcher 3 and put 100 plus hours into it, and now I just like, I want to get the books and I want to play the older game just to like, you know, really immerse myself into that story and get to know more about Geralt and the people around him. But um, so within this game, we know there's uh, three different characters you can play as, that being uh, Nero, Dante, and V. And uh, I imagine that they all play quite differently from each other. Uh, yes, Dante and Nero are kind of similar, but uh, Dante has a more varied moveset mm -hmm. where he can uh, style switch to be be uh, more more sword oriented to um, dodge oriented and block oriented. Mm -hmm. The weirdest one is the newcomer V, who we are about to play as here. Oh, um, he he play he's weaker than the other two, yeah. so he can commands these demons that he conjures up, named Shadow and Griffin who are a panther and a bird, and you just kind of survey the battlefield while moving around, keeping V safe, while the other two just take care of business. Yeah. And so, uh, of course, I want to know, um, which of those three is your favorite to play as? I really like playing as Nero in this one. I wasn't a fan of him in 4, um, mostly because his uh, he didn't have much variation to his combos and stuff. You stuck with the same sword the whole time, and I got a bit bored with it. But in this one, we have the Devil Breaker system, which are just robot arms. So Who doesn't love a good robot arm? Robot arms are amazing, and they each have a unique ability. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I want to know, is Capcom a company that you have always liked and enjoyed the games they put out? And what are, your, what are some of your favorite series that they've done? I do enjoy Capcom. I'd be a fool if I didn't say Resident Evil was really good. Something interesting about Resident Evil is um, Devil May Cry 1 was originally supposed to be uh, Resident Evil 4, but they got like all the way through it basically and d ultimately decided this is way too weird to be a Resident Evil <laughs> game. And Which they is, scrapped it and made their own series out of it. Imagine there being a game way too weird to be Resident Evil. <laughs> And uh, so uh, one question I want to ask, is there anything about this game that you don't like? Um, I wish that they stuck with the fixed camera angles that they had in the original games. Uh, it just created a, this really cool atmosphere and I'm finding it a lot more difficult to find like the secret objects and stuff now that it's all in third person and mm -hmm. I'm just not quite used to that yet. And th this, you're not quite used to it. This is coming from somebody who I believe you've said has beaten the game three times already. Uh, yes, I have beaten. Uh, I first beat it on Devil Hunter, then Son of Sparta, and then and then Human, which is normal, hard, easy. I'm currently working on my Dante Must Die mode, which is super hard. I can imagine something like Dante Must Die sounds like quite the name. I mean, it's not just like, oh, this is hard. No, you're, you're going to die, and you're going to die a lot. So I hope you're ready for it. Devil May Cry is very famous for its difficulty. <laughs> Somebody's going to be crying, that's for sure. But uh, <laughs> for Project Delta, I was Dalton Spies, and with me was... Cody Nance. And thanks for watching.